The musicians of Duo Sequenza have tasked themselves with making classical music accessible yet challenging to their audience. Performing modern pieces in intimate settings, audiences are asked to lean in and tune their ears to the dynamic interplay between flute and guitar. We sat down with flutist Deborah Silvert and classical guitarist Paul Bowman for a performance and interview prior to a concert at the historic Memorial Opera House in Valparaiso. Guitar is, is capable of so many things and, and what he can do is very different than what I can do and what I can do he can't do. You know, it, it's a nice combination because it's um, very transparent and very intimate. The artistic possibilities are ours and ours alone. You know, we're just a good musical match. I get the sustained thing, certainly, um, um, but Paul gets all the good percussive stuff. It's not, not so much anymore. Now, you know, the composers today, they are writing some more percussive things for flute. Um, but he gets, you know, he's very busy. And I just have the, you know, the one line. Um, some contemporary music calls for being able to play more than one note at a time. We either hum you know, with, with the pitches that we're blowing or we're, or we're even doing a multiphonic thing where we're actually, actually producing two pitches at the same time. It, it has a, a lot to do also, I think, with uh, the, the hierarchy is not, you know, soloist accompanist. It's, it's the equal team in the chamber music in its truest sense of the word. So uh, this has been reflected in the writing, as I said, for for this combination in the last 20, 30 years. Um, uh, composers have taken care to make sure that there are prominent guitar sections that will show off the guitar in a soloistic light, as well as the flute in a soloistic light. And then moments when we're, you know, together, uh, it, it, it pieces uh, are written in a way that allow an equal, uh, you know, relationship from one to the other and not in a hierarchical sense uh, as would be the case, say, of 19th century music. We're hoping that because music is really the most abstract art form, that people can at least understand these moments uh, that happen in music and, you know, meet us halfway and react accordingly. Uh, and, and, and I think that's just being a good audience is, is also, uh, you know, being aware of when those moments come because we make it obvious. The abstraction is because it's a fleeting moment and you have to be in the moment. It's like a puzzle for me. I enjoy, you know, uh, assembling the puzzle is the music, assembling it and the, let people get the impression that I'm trying to convey. It's, it's an attempt, again, to, to bring something tangible and, and uh, uh, feeling uh, to a, a, a modern piece that maybe, again, make, illuminating the abstraction a little better. That's the whole idea. The other thing that's interesting about when you're playing to a live audience is that, and I don't think audiences understand this or appreciate it at all, but we do get 
information and communication back from the audience. And it's powerful and it changes our performance and informs our performance. You know, it, it's very, in, again, it's so intangible. I think it's, it's hard, you know, we don't have great words to talk about music. <laughs> We're trying to develop brand new audiences for contemporary classical music and promote the work of living composers at the same time. So we, you know, to, again, not just attract audiences, but to engage audiences, because music is communication. And, you know, we, we're doing this because it's, we just believe the, this music that these composers are writing, especially today, is so relevant and so interesting and so exciting and we love it and we love playing it and we want to share it with listeners. You know, nothing lights up your brain like classical music whether you're playing it or listening to it. Thank you.